First, I would like to thank, thank Daniel for the invitation. It's a great pleasure. So today I will be talking about VOF method for interface capture in Open Core. I don't know how many of you guys have been already exposed to VOF, but I'm already I'm assuming that you have. So we will start from there. So first, a presentation outline. So um, I will talk about problem statement. What what is the problem that I want to solve? I'm working at the solid education lab at the University of Iowa. So the problem is like kind of interdisciplinary between mechanical engineering and materials processing. So I will talk about that then. Just to make sure that everybody is on the same page in terms of the basic understanding, I will quickly review the fundamentals of solid education. And then I will overview the government, governing equations and mathematical model and I will make it very clear that where why I do need VOA to solve this problem. And then I will end up with talking about some results. So problem statement. So what I'm I trying to solve. So here you are seeing my simulation domain. It's a cavity. Uh, initially I have a liquid binary alloy PV 18% SN. So I'm cooling it from the left and from the bottom boundary, so it starts to cool down and solidify. So the, the right boundary and the top boundary are isolated, so what we would expect is that my liquid will start to solidify from here and here. So like, let's say, for example, in 10 seconds after I started my cooling, what I will expect is that I will get a solid region which is fully solid, here, the right up boundary, I will get a region which is fully liquid. And between these two regions, I will get a two-phase region, which is called mush region in the solidification terminology. So what mush is, mush is just a combination of solid and liquid. If we just look in more detail about this, so, so uh, two other terminologies, this is my solid line. I will refer to that later in the, later in the presentation, and the liquid line. Liquid line is a boundary between liquid and mush, solid slime is the boundary between mush and solid. So if we look in more detail on this mushy zone, what we will say is this. So initially everything is liquid. I'm starting to cool from the left boundary, so I get solid here. On the right hot region, I still have a liquid. So between these two, I get a mush, and so I get some solid dendrites for me. So, uh, the correspondence between these two figures, if you look at the top figure, obviously I do not have any liquid on the left, near the left boundary, liquid fraction is zero. I have the liquid fraction is one on the right boundary, meaning that it's totally liquid, and liquid fraction is between zero and one uh, in the mush area. So, next is the mathematical model. So, so I don't want you to be distracted with this math here, but generally it is energy equation to species equations and the liquid slime coming from the phase diagram. But I want you to focus here is on is these two equations which look very simple but are very tricky to solve. The first one is the great volume fraction equation. What it does, it just show, shows me, gives me how my solids form and after they form, they start to grow. So this is the grain fraction. Uh, how they start to grow is that as I'm cooling down, this V here increases, so the right hand side becomes positive and increases. So therefore, the left hand side has to increase, so I get some solids forming and growing. So this is again some other supplementary relations just to get that model close. And one more point about the previous slide. As you see, I'm not, I do not have any flow equations here. So now you might ask, okay, why we do need VOF? Because in, in literature, VOF is usually used when there is a flow. So I will answer that question here. So, if you look at this equation, this equation is not global, 
meaning that this equation is valid only at some parts of the simulation domain. If I implement this equation, in, for example, in the liquid region, I will get absolutely garbage. So it's not valid there. So just during the simulations, just to decide whether I have to implement this equation or not, what I need to know is I need to know the position of this calendar front or solid front. After I know that, I, then I can easily say that, okay, implement that equation in this region, but not in this region. So in order to make that decision, I need an algorithm to track this calendar front. So, so, if you're, so this is the VOF equation in open form. Some of you might have already been exposed to this. This part is what comes from open forms interform solver, but there is an additional term that I have I had to add, which is this nava that we term. The reason that I have to add that term is that when you are dealing with the flow problems, as is the case with the open forms interform solver, this term is zero. Nava that v is zero because of the continuity. But here my v is not the flow velocity. It is a velocity coming from just a solidification model. So nabla that V is not zero. So I have to add that term. But okay, so now the question is that I have modified the solver. I have to be very careful to verify, to make sure that my results are correct. If you do that, I'm, I will compare this two-dimensional two model with a simpler one-dimensional model. In the one dimensions, I don't, I really don't need to solve VOF. I can solve it, but it's not necessary. In one dimension, it's very easy. I have the velocity of the, that dashed red line on the right. I know that velocity, so I can just solve this ODE to track the position of the line. There's no need to VOF. But what I will do is that I will develop this solver and then compare the results of <coughs> two dimensions with that one dimensional solver, if they agree, then I will, it will guarantee that th that additional term has been implemented correctly. So this is the thermal physical properties of the alloy that I am interested in. My simulation parameters such as the mesh, time step, and this is the, my verification. This shows the verification. So I'm compared here, what we are looking at is a solid fraction profile along the domain, along the one dimensional domain, at t equal to 10 seconds. On the left side, this is a solid fraction. On the right, this is it's a alpha from the VOF. So this dashed line shows the alpha. So when alpha is equal to 1, it means that yeah, it's, I'm behind the calendar front. When alpha is equal to 0, I'm ahead of the calendar front. So then these uh, solid squares are showing my one-dimensional case and the solid red line is showing the two-dimensional case with VOF. So you can see that they almost match perfectly, so I'm very confident that the additional term in the VOF solver has been implemented correctly. So this is a movie showing that how my solidification will start and I will just get the solid to the solid for the calendar front propagating into the domain. So I already showed you that what I'm expecting, so this is like a schematic of what we would expect and this is my results. So again the blue liquid line is solid, the red and or black is the solid line. So this, uh, these are some contours showing some result. This is the VO, alpha from the VOF equation between 0 and 1, solid fraction, meaning that how, how much of solid I do have, again from 0 to 1, and that's the tem temperature distribution. So it's very, it makes absolutely full sense. Here, I'm pulling from here, I'm getting low, lower temperatures here. Lower temperatures means more solid here, and it's also symmetric, so just ensures that the results are great. So with that, I